Hello, this is Dr. Rana from LOI Care. Um, we received some questions regarding glaucoma and cataracts, and um, we're going to answer them here. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. Good. So our first question, um, you know, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I am um, a glaucoma specialist and a cataract surgeon here in Lansing, Michigan. Um, I did my training in uh, Detroit at the Kresge Eye Institute where I got my uh, um, medical degree at Wayne State and my fellowship uh, in glaucoma at the Kresge Eye Institute as well. And I live out here in Lansing now and I have two young daughters and a husband who lives out here as well. Um, that's kind of the basics about my life. Okay. So. What is glaucoma? So glaucoma is a group of diseases that has a common um, uh, path pathology where you have the optic nerve that connects your eye to your brain that gets damaged. Um, that is what the end point of glaucoma is. Uh, there are a lot of risk factors for glaucoma and a lot of different reasons why patients get glaucoma depending on your certain condition. Um, but mostly our way of treating it is by regulating the intraocular pressure, which has really been the only thing um, that science has shown has delayed the progression of the disease. Um, so our goal mostly is to bring your pressure as low as we can so the damage is reduced um, to the optic nerve. So John wants to know, how do I even get glaucoma? So the question. So glaucoma is caused by a lot of different things. Um, there is different mechanisms of glaucoma in terms of um, if you have primary glaucoma or secondary glaucoma, the most common kind is the primary glaucoma that just is the disease that it is. Um, and those patients have um, usually an altered drainage pathway in their eye. If you think of your eye of like, as like a sink, there's a faucet in there and a drain. Usually the faucet's working pretty good, but the drain kind of clogs up and then your pressure starts to build and that causes the damage. Um, how does one get rid of it? So in terms of treatments for glaucoma, um, there are kind of stepwise therapies. Usually we start with eye drops to bring the pressure down. It usually slows the faucet down, so to speak. Um, that's what the eye drops do, or finds another way for the fluid to leave the eye. There is also a laser that we could do, um, or uh, incisional surgery in the operating room, but we save that for really kind of advanced cases, as, um, if nothing else works. Does it mean that somebody will go blind if they have glaucoma? It's untreated? That's a good question. So untreated glaucoma does cause permanent vision loss and you can lose all your vision from that. Um, so it's very important to get screened. That's kind of the, um, the take home message for that. Uh, there is um, good treatments out there. So as long as you're caught early, we can delay the progression as long as you're being followed for your lifetime. Um, will my family, so if I have glaucoma, will my family get glaucoma as well? Is it hereditary? Um, so one of the risk factors is it is a family history. Um, you, it does run in families. So it's not exactly like one-on-one. -on -one. If your mom has it, you're definitely going to get it. But it does, um, it does have a f uh, familial trait. So we do take that into consideration when making a diagnosis and when um, following you over time to let your siblings and your children know that you were diagnosed. So my family, or um, would like my family doctor be able to recognize that I have glaucoma or is it a specialist that I have to see? That's a good question. So <clears throat> as long as you get a dilated eye exam, which is actually done um, from an, any eye care professional, they can they can look at the optic nerve in the back part of the eye to see if there's any suspicious signs for glaucoma and then refer you appropriately. So the most important part about being screened or diagnosed is to have a full dilated eye exam. So if we, um, Melissa wants to know a little bit about cataracts, so if we move on to cataracts, could you tell us what cataracts are? That's a good question. So um, cataracts are just a cloudy lens in your eye. Um, people are born with a clear lens in your eye that's flexible. As you get older, the lens turns cloudy and inflexible, and that is when the cataract develops. So if, um, she said that her dad is scheduled for a cataract surgery. What is it that he or she needs to know prior to going into the surgery? Um, in terms of the cataract surgery, there's a few things to think about. Um, it is a same-day surgery, mostly. Um, we see you back pretty often, one day, one week um, after, for sure, to kind of take a look at it. Um, and then the other thing about the surgery is deciding what kind of lens you want to put in your eye. So we take that natural cloudy lens out, put a new intraocular lens in there, the new intraocular lens can be set at different distances, so depending on what your lifestyle is. There are, are also specialty lenses, like premium lenses, um, called multifocals or toric lenses, and those are kind of patient-specific based on your lifestyle, based on your measurements, if you're a good candidate. 
Um, so those are things to think about when you're planning your surgery. Good. And then Jim has a question um, in the comments, and he just wants to know what age can you get cataracts? That's a good question. So it really varies. Um, most patients will start noticing some symptoms of a cataract when they hit about 50, depending on their other medical issues and their kind of family genetics of getting cataracts. You can also have congenital cataracts, so that's not to say that babies don't get cataracts sometimes at birth. Um, but generally speaking, age-related um, cataracts are usually start around the age of 50 and then develop from there based on kind of environmental things and genetics at that point. Will somebody need glasses after they have cataract surgery? So glasses are definitely um, something that it depends on the kind of intraocular lens you choose for your eye. So I would say for the most part, um, you should have uh, glasses. Um, it's an option and you should plan on needing glasses unless of course you pick a different lens that would be more glasses independent. Um, in terms of these glasses that would be um, needed, you know, depending on the kind of implant you need, it would kind of go from there. So you can never really guarantee that you'll definitely not need glasses, but our goal is always to get as much of the glasses prescription in your eye as possible, um, depending on the lens you pick. And then Daniel has a question too. Um, how often should you get an eye exam? That's a good question. It really depends on your age. So um, in terms of getting eye exams, you should definitely get an eye exam once every year to every two years. Um, and when you do get an eye exam, they should be, it should be a dilated eye exam, depending on your eye care professional's discretion of um, how often you're needed and the pathology you have. Uh, it's, it varies in terms of screening based on what they see, um, how often after your initial visit they would want you to be followed. Um, when will I know, or when will somebody know if they're ready for a cataract surgery? That's a good question. So the biggest thing about cataract surgery is about the patient's lifestyle. So usually when I counsel a patient regarding cataracts, even if I notice the cataracts, um, if their lifestyle isn't, you know, inhibited or prohibited by the cataracts and they're functioning just fine, then we can just keep monitoring them. One of the biggest things patients don't think about about their cataracts when they say, I think I see okay, so I should be okay, is driving. So sometimes if you're planning on driving still for many years to come, um, you need to have better vision in order to do that safely. What, um, what can I do to prevent cataracts? Good question. So uh, cataracts are kind of an age-related change, so you definitely get them as time goes on and as you get older. Um, there are some uh, lifestyle things you could do. You could make sure you uh, limit your UV um, your UV light exposure by wearing sunglasses as often as needed. Um, you could make sure you get screened to make to see how the cataracts are progressing. Um, mostly, if you're going to get cataracts, you're going to get them. They are Some studies show that if you um, are a smoker, you will have a quicker progression of your cataracts as well as kind of systemic diseases like diabetes. So there are some things you can do. Keep your blood sugar under control. Don't smoke cigarettes. Um, wear sunglasses. Um, but usually by the time you've noticed your cataracts are developing, those things have already happened. The changes have already been made in your eye. So we have another great question is, what's the advantage of a dilated exam? Um, so a dilated exam, uh, what it does is it makes your pupils really big. It gives us the, the eye care professional an opportunity to shine some light on the inside of your eye and see the inside of your eye. The structures that we're able to see as a result of a dilated eye exam are the retina, the macula, and the optic nerve. Um, it gives us a good idea of any pathology that's going on inside your body as well. So, for example, if you're diabetic, you would need a diabetic eye exam, which includes a dilated exam, so we could see if there's any bleeding or any other disease processes going on in the back of your eye. <clears throat> so the, the one question that's on everybody's mind is do carrots really help my eyesight? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so in terms of carrots in specific, um, they do have some good properties in terms of um, uh, eyesight, but mostly having kind of a balanced diet and um, eating your fruits and vegetables and eating your green leafy vegetables will do the best in terms of keeping your eyes really healthy. So if somebody wants to know more information um, as we're wrapping up this, this live feed, where could they go to find more information on eye health? So we do have a lot of resources here at LOI. We, you could be pointed to our website at loeye.com. Um, we're more than happy to answer questions here in terms of uh, the eye care professionals, and we're happy to see anybody who needs any help.
great. So one last question, because you got in there right under the wire, but can wearing non-prescription lenses too often cause you to need prescription lenses? Uh, that's a good question. So non-prescription lenses, um, no. So the answer to that basically is if you don't need glasses, but you're wearing kind of clear lenses, would that make you need glasses? And the answer to that is no. So glasses prescriptions are a result of the shape of your eye, so the shape of your cornea and the length of your eye. Um, <clears throat> so using something externally like a non-prescription lens won't alter the shape of your eye. Good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much.